Welcome to Cloth Doll Inspirations. I'm Patty Medeiros Kalia, and I'm really excited to be here with you and to share some of my inspirations. In the first DVD, we built bodies. We did the what I call the nitty gritty of doll making. I showed you how to draw faces, sculpt them, how to do hands, and how basically to put a body together. In this one, Based on a lot of your feedback, we're going to do more accessorizing, clothing, and lots of glam. Uh, glitz and glam, my, some of my favorite things, some beadwork, just all that fun stuff. And we want to talk about inspiration a lot. You'll hear that word quite often through these three different workshops that we're going to be doing. We're going to work on three dolls, basically from the same pattern but I'll show you how the three of them are so unique from each other, they don't even look like sisters. Here is Alexia. She is steampunk, one of my favorite. A lot of people say, what is steampunk? It was an era, it was when the Industrial Revolution started, it was when the steam engine was built, clocks became very important, and it, it was the Victorian era meets science fiction or fantasy. So what makes Alexia steampunk? It's her clothing. I've used a garment from 1908, which was also in that era. I've used a wedding dress. So you can see her dress is made with the silk velvet from the dress from 1908. This is part of my wedding dress, where I'll show you which part I used. And so you've got the old and kind of new, as we've married 39 years. And her hat, hats were very important during that steampunk era. And I've used an old brooch of my grandmother's, which was probably from the turn of the century, and which is perfect for adding to her hat. And her purse has a piece of old lace that was from that era, very you know, almost Art Nouveau, Art Deco, kind of moving into that era as well, which is another era that I loved. She's got a brooch that is actually an old earring, and her ring is an old earring, half of one, as are the embellishments on her shoes. Now the shoes, I was Googling around on the internet and looking at the, that era, the steampunk era, and what were shoes like during that time period. And I love one shoe that I saw that had a strap that was beaded and then had an embellishment in the center. So I, this is my own version of that particular shoe. In our first workshop, we worked on a theme, steampunk. We worked with old and new. And this one is kind of a dream. This is Brandy, who represents my dream as a child, a little farm girl growing up in the Midwest, dreaming of Hollywood, who spent every Saturday morning going to the movie theater, watching all those great old serials. As I was making her, though, something happened. And this is when I learned that you don't name a doll before she's finished. I created this beautiful body with all these little beaded joints, and then I had this fun idea of creating a skirt using the heat transfer dies, which I really do love, and digitizing an image. So I made this really pretty little skirt and put it on her and thought, oh, that's just lovely. And then I thought, no, there's something very very wrong here. I've worked putting these beautiful joints together down here on her knees and you can't see them because the skirt covers it. So I thought, uh-oh, you know, we need to make a little change here. So she needed something shorter. I didn't want to lose any of the dye work that I did up here. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to have to make a whole new skirt. And then 
that changed again because when I made the skirt, and I've got it right here, this is the new skirt, and I'm going to put it on so you can see the transformation. Okay, so now we have Bernadette. Bernadette is going to the, a party. She's going to a very fancy party, maybe a ball. And she is now a little French country girl who is going to Paris. And she had to get all dressed up to go into the city, the big city. So now we have something much more appropriate. Now you can see the beaded knees. So that's Bernadette, and I just love her. I think she's very, very, very appropriate now as far as her, her clothing, and she everything just really fits, and Brandy just doesn't do it anymore, and that's why we came up with the name Bernadette. people want to know where I get my inspiration for various dolls. I've been kind of in an Asian kick lately. I read Lisa C's book, Snowflower and the Secret Fan, and was just totally taken with that period, which started before the war and moved into the war, and it's about friendships. It's also about the binding of feet and the various things that happened to little girls in the early days of China. That's Part of where my inspiration comes from, I'm reading a book, these images come to mind. The other thing I do too is I love collecting fabrics. Now, I used to work for a Japanese airline in marketing and sales and would go to Japan often and would go to the temple sales where you could buy beautiful kimonos for, well, equivalent to about 15 to 20 US dollars. I don't know what it is today, but then it was. But there's images in here that inspired me as well. And you'll see when I show you a drawing in a little bit how I would pick out a certain flower and draw that and then create my own design. One of my other sources of inspiration is the Chiramin fabric. I love this. That's that kind of bumpy stuff that you see, very traditional Japanese and Chinese as well, not just Japanese. And you'll see a lot of this done with the Kokeshi dolls and uh, the Tamari and just some of the different techniques that they use in Japan. It's made with rayon and silk, so it's a blend. It frays beautifully, which I've used in some of my collage work. But the Chiramin, which you will see how I've used that in this particular doll, and I'm going to show you later on how I make tubes and use them for decoration and embellishments on a doll. <laughs> 